Are you serious? So this is How to Kill an Hour. I'm Marcus Bronzy. And hello, I'm Nicholas Bright. We promised we we're going to talk about something that Nick has been doing for our kill a bit. At the start of every show, we, we share a bit of way, a way that we've been killing some time. Mm. Uh, it could be an app, could be a little game, could be a day out, or it could be a life-changing experience. Yeah. So I've been um, basically donating all of my money and food to charitable organisation. No, not really. Fridge. I've been yeah. <laughs> I've been training for the London Marathon. That's what I've been doing. April twenty third is when that is happening. If you're listening to this after April twenty third, I fucking smashed it. Broke the world record. You saw me up there with the Ethiopians and Kenyans, bro. Mm, mm. I was dead. Uh, no, I'm probably dead. If you're listening to this after April 23rd, so rest in peace to me. But uh, yeah, I've basically been training for it. It's been super hard and horrible. Like you know when, like I hate to, I hate to sound negative because I don't, I don't mean to be yeah. negative. Yeah. Like obviously, it's a really positive experience, and it's like I'm doing it for a, a mental health charity as well called Heads Together. So it's really, really cool for all of those reasons. But when people say it's really enjoyable. Oh my God, I'm just loving it. Like, I don't get it. I'm not loving it. I'm not loving the training at all. I'm loving the kind of, as I said, the the awareness and stuff like that's being risen for the for the charity. But the training, oh my God, it is just, it's horrendous. Where, where are we at now with the training now? Because because the, the full marathon's 26 miles. 26.2. 26.2 miles. Yep. Where are you at now? So so the date today with we're, we're a... Last day of April, day twenty eighth of April, pancake 20, day. Twenty eighth of Feb, mate. February, yeah. Twenty twenty eighth of, 28th of Feb, April. Pancake I'd, day. I'd have already done yeah. it. It was great. <laughs> it was a great, yeah. Um, so twenty eighth of, of Feb, you are a couple months away now from this marathon. Mm-hmm. Where are we at now? About eight weeks out. Where's the training at? Where do you uh, need? Where should you be? And where are you? I should be way further than I am. Where should you be like, then? What should you be doing? It's hard because I don't have a program or a trainer <laughs> or anything. I, I'm not even like... You don't even know anyone that's a, an Olympian around you or any, yeah, anyone that's sort don't, of... My, my girlfriend, she don't do this stuff. She don't know programs for this. Like, so <laughs> she doesn't, not for a marathon. She, mu- she must know a guy. No, you, no. you know a guy? Yeah. She, she, she'll know like elite stuff. It's point, like, I, yeah. I, like, I can't do elite tra- training. There's yeah. no way. I don't even run outside yet. Like I still run in the gym, bro. Gym, so, bro. So you're in it, like. So what uh, the the ideal marathon runner? Yeah. What should they be doing day to day now? It's all about s. It's all about uh, accumulated weekly mileage. That is what you're told. So basically, once a week you need to do a long run, and by the time you're marathon ready, you should be doing twenty miles in your long run once a week. Once a week, you do twenty miles in a row. Yeah. Right. So. Um, that's just, that's just, it's more like, so once you're at the stage where you can do 20 miles, right, it's more so that you're getting used to being able to just be on your feet running for that amount of time. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Like, as in like the amount of time in, yeah. in, in hours and minutes. Yeah. Um, and then aside from that, you should be doing like some tempo stuff, which is like shorter, shorter time, but slightly faster, uh, and also interval running as well so like you might do like two minutes 80 percent you know uh ha- like hard running and then rest for five minutes then again two minutes 80 percent hard running rest again for five minutes well not even not five minutes you, i mean that's way too long but you know what i mean like mm-hmm. two minutes on one minute off two minutes on one minute off like that cut that type of stuff i'm not doing any interval training because like i said i'm running indoors at the minute and interval training that's dead to me. Any, I'm not going to do interval training. I'll tell you now because unless you're on an athlete, uh, if, unless you go to an athletics track where there's other people doing that stuff, you just look ridiculous. So I'm not going to start doing interval training on the street by myself, like looking weird. Mm. I do tempo stuff. So I, what I try to do in the gym is I try to run a 5k in under 20 minutes. So I'm almost there now with the 5k. Uh, I, I ran my last one. I done. I done four point five, four point five k in twenty minutes. Fucking hell! So like, I just need to get another half a kilometer, which is doable. Um, and then with the long run, Adele Roberts from Radio One, from BBC Radio One, who I'm doing this with, I saw on Sunday, so two days ago, 
I think she done like 17, 18 miles. I think I saw an Instagram post. I am absolutely nowhere near that. Like, I think my longest one is still nine miles. So it's like, I'm 10 miles down. Like, <laughs> I'm 10 miles down. Nick, um, what does this mean? For your marathon, are you are you really gonna win? Because you're kind of naturally athletic anyway. Do you think you you're just gonna have to wing it on a day, suck yeah. it up, and you'll smash it? I'll get through it, mate. I'm just trying to do it in between four and five hours, which is I've cal- I've done the sums, I've calculated it. It's completely doable. I should be fine. Um, by the time the marathon comes around, I reckon my long run will be up to eighteen, nineteen, twenty miles anyway. Um, and I look, I'll be good, man. Let's look. look like I said, I think I've said it on the pod before as well. There are, I've, I've looked at kind of footage of the London Marathon and people finishing the London Marathon, going across the line and, you know, being happy to finish it and blah, blah, blah. And there is people that are in worse shape than me, some some big boned people finishing the marathon. It's, that's all I'm saying. So you've used that, your your a- analytics, yeah, are that's based around, you've, you've looked at the, t- what, have you looked at a good time, have so you looked at a four or five hour finishing mark? Well, no, I haven't people. seen what time they finished it in, but like, yeah. I just saw the, the, the kind of, the big boned, like, dudes and women running across the line and celebrating. And I'm like, I'm slender six foot three, bruv. I'm good. I'll probably be able to do it now. No training. Do you know what I mean? If they can do it, like, come on. I got this. I love the way that that's the way that you you figured out whether you can do it or not. You look at him and go, nah, he's fucked. I've definitely yeah, got this. That's 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 that, bruv. All right. Fair enough. <sighs> oh, and Nick's just um, shared a little bit of marathon flavor with us. How to kill an hour. That's the protein, bruv. Are you on the, are you, are you, what, yeah, what are you eating I as got, well? Oh. Stinks, bro. Yeah, safe. I got like I'm eating these grenade carb killer bars. Nah, car- they kill carbs. Well, no, they don't kill carbs. They they got carbs in there. They got twenty three grams of pro. No, sorry, over twenty three grams of protein, and then one point five grams of impact carbs per sixty gram bar. What's an impact carb? That sounds like the sort of carb that when it hits the toilet, everybody knows about it. <laughs> an, Im- an impact carb. Are you gonna open it now? Are you gonna have a live tasting on the show? No, 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 no. This is this is my this is my lunch for later. Oh, you have to you have to eat at specific times as well now. Well, no, not really. Okay, I just fair mean enough. I'm just I just mean like I'm gonna have lunch and then I'll probably eat that as well. Did because you get, did you get that for free? No, not even. What? I huh? bought it. I thought they the would have sent you some well, stuff. Two pounds something per oh, bar. All right. Well, uh, my killer bit isn't isn't as athletic as yours, but it might be something you could use while you are being athletic, though, Nick. Go on. Um, Bang and Olufsen. Am I saying it right? I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. The Bang best way to be you know. The best way to remember how to say it is think of that Tiny Temper song where he says, Bang Anna Olofsson. Okay, so you say it like that, Bang Anna Olofsson. Bang Anna Olofsson is what Bang I say. Bang Anna But um, it, Tiny Temper probably says it like that because uh, it fits the lyric better. Okay. It's, it just says B&O, where's the... Well, this is their, this is their B.O. play range. Uh, they sent play. us the H5 headphones, which are... Um, Bluetooth headphones have just kind of been popping, yep. um, and I'm gonna say it's mostly down to the iPhone Seven having no jack. I'm I'm gonna say it like that's that's the play. So everyone's yep. kind of looking about looking at getting Bluetooth headphones. We've tried out a few on the show, uh, and we tried out the BOH Five. So they're a flavor of headphone which are in ear headphones. Uh, they've got a tether between them, haven't they, Nick? So like it's two. Imagine like two earbuds, but instead of like a lead that goes down into your phone or your device, there's like a small line that goes behind your neck and connects both of them yeah um it's got a few features that they that they kind of brag to us so they say it's got top top sound because let's be honest bang and olufsen is is known for good sound yeah, yeah, in speakers yeah. and home systems so it's they're a, saying it's a it, premium brand yeah it's a primo brand um they've got something called touch tone interface where you can pretty much eq the headphones separately yeah. to anything else um they're in-ear headphones for me I really, I've got, I've got an interesting opinion on those. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about what they've got in them as well. Um, they're what? supposed to be splash and dust resistant. So yeah. you're, that basically means they don't get all dirt down the headphone. That's what it says here. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm reading it. And, and to make sure you don't leave them behind, mm. we've built a magnet into each earpiece. So mm-hmm. when you take them out of your ears, you can wear them around your neck. Yeah, that's right. Which is kind of easy because with these blue, Bluetooth headphones, I've always had to get the tether, like you know the the buds that they that we've been trying out. Yeah. I've always had to get a tether because I'm like, if this bud falls out of my ear, 
I've lost the headphone. Yeah. Like it's like my gym headphones. In the canal. I, I use yeah. I use uh, the the Bose. Uh, they got the Bose Connect. Yeah, they are they like buds as well? Yeah, yeah, but they they they're tethered. They've got a wire in between mm, as well, mm. and then you clip it to the back of your um, gym like top. You clip it to the collar. So yeah. like, if it falls out, like it just like just drops down to your boob. Yeah, basically. that's what you want. But first things first with these headphones. I suppose the most important thing is the sound, isn't it? Yeah. What's, sound, the, what's the sound saying? I can't lie. Bud wise, they've got. Brr. But bud wise, Brr. <laughs> wicked other. <laughs> uh, they've got some of the best sound that I've heard in terms of bass output because small headphones, buds, it's hard to get bass out of yeah. them. When those fuckers are turned up, there's. You know, you said before, it's always like, I need more bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wait, I'm not going to say it gave me, nothing's ever going to give me enough bass, but there was a lot of bass. And they're also really, um, they're really good at excluding outside sound. Oh, that's, that's really important, I think. Especially in the, for me, for gym headphones, it's good because they're fucking, I hate gym music. Yeah, it's always shit. Always. Yeah, because that's, that, that's a big problem I've got with the, uh, with the Bose Connect ones yeah. that I use. Like, the, the dampening of um, external sound is shit. Yeah, it is yeah. like I was so disappointed because they're not they're not cheap. They're yeah. they're very expensive, in fact. But like the the ones that I use, and uh, I've got a pair of um, Beat Studio, um, obviously over ear headphones, which I use just when I'm out and about. And those the noise cancelling on those is really good. So it's like two extremes. And actually, I would prefer the in ear. Bose connects to be so much better at excluding the sound outside. It's fine when you're listening to music and you've got the music turned up high or whatever, but sometimes if I'm in the gym, I might listen to a podcast or listen to talk radio, which is just speech or whatever. And all I can hear is the shit gym music, like getting in or the gym bros going, yeah. you're like it's just, well, just the weights hitting the floor. Yeah. Do, do, do. But, um, mad annoying. So yeah, those are pretty good. When I was putting them in though, when I first tried them on, I really struggle to get them in my ears, though. I don't know if it's because because I got funny shaped ears. Yeah. But well, even with the different. Well, it took me a while. That this is the thing with these sorts of things. I re- it t- it's long when you get a pair of headphones like this. But I'd literally say put on every single size of bud mm-hmm. and put it in your ear because it it wasn't until I tried like I think you get three ones that are sponge which you can squeeze and three plasticky ones which you can just slip in. It wasn't until I tried the last size of the ones that you could squeeze that I was like. Oh, these actually fit. Until then, they were falling out when I was trying them on. I was just sitting there and I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to work. So what? try with any any type of headphone like this. I'm like, always try the fucking, all the different sizes of the buds. Otherwise, yeah. you're fucked. Um, if they don't fit you, because you're like, it's a lot of effort to go through something that don't fit. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's the problem I've always had because I've got, without sounding weird, I've got like small ear holes. Mm, mm. So it's like, I always have to use the smallest size. Yeah. But when, when before you had these headphones where you could change the like, no bud tr- bit, yeah, no you know, like the headphones you've got in right now, in yeah. fact, the, they're the Apple, um, just the, the Apple in ear headphones. Mm-hmm. They never, ever fit me because the, uh, the thing's too big. Yeah. And they just fall out. Yeah. So this is, yeah. So I almost had that situation. I was almost going to give up and I was like, hang on, just try the last size. And uh, they worked out all right for me. The magnetic thing where they connect behind you, uh, when they um, when you take them off, you can kind of clip them together and they doing turn it. off. That's pretty cool. I'm doing it right uh, now. Magnet could do with being a little bit stronger. Yeah. yeah look, here's, here's the sound of me doing it. Wait, wait, wait. That was it. <laughs> but yeah, man, they're all right. Um, I've made a few calls on them. So they sound fine because they've got a little microphone and a volume control in them. You can use Siri with them. They look pretty rugged as well. I've got to say the lead between the headphones looks pretty strong, doesn't it? Yeah. Like it doesn't look like it's going to wear and tear. Um, the version that I got to try out came in a lovely pink color as well, which really just brought out the Metro side of me, which yeah. I really appreciated, man. Say, pink, cheers pink for that. In. But um, no, they're all right, man. That's my killer bit for the week. The, the B&O H5s, uh, the, the B.O. Play H5s. I like them. Long story short. They've got come in a little carry bag and that as well. Only Here's one thing though. They come with their own little charging block that you plug them into yeah i've got that's it all here. good but we got the usb lead but no plug for it yeah that's annoying. come on bruv Sa- same as come my, on it's the same as the the bose connects come on they don't come yeah. with the plug come on like we all know that we got that we can plug them into a computer but it's not going to charge as quick as if you plug them into a usb thing so what what are you saying i have to either choose between pl- 
charging my iPhone yeah, yeah. for this. That's or exactly I, what or I, I need to do, bro. I need a cheaper product, <laughs> which comes with a plug. So that's the only thing that I'm like, come on, man, Bang & Olufsen, like, send us the send us the cube. Surely, surely, though, we're at a, we're almost at a stage in, in life where plugs that get like as in like plug sockets that are getting mm. installed in yards because i've been in i've stayed in a few hotels mm-hmm. where the plug sockets have got usb yeah, slots yeah, in them yeah. that needs to happen that just needs to become standardized like yeah. now yeah that every needs to be everywhere every, yeah. yeah every plug that gets plugged in from now uh, yeah. sorry every plug that gets like put into a yard so when you but say if you like buy a new home you know like a new build property those need to come with USB plug sockets. Exactly. To just like, come on, let's, exactly. let's stop fucking around now, guys. And it's not like, it's not like that is already here. So I'm a little, it's like, I feel like it's like I bought a kettle. Imagine buying a fancy kettle and they're like, you can use the lead from your old kettle. You, <laughs> everyone's got a kettle lead, but you're like, come on, man. I just bought a fancy yeah. kettle. Let's plug it in. But I think, I think part of it comes down to the fact of these companies, which are global, it, it for manufacturing yeah. it end up costing them more yeah, because they have to yeah. put new they'd have to put different um yeah but you're, you're, you're primo though aren't you you're, you're top of the line aren't you these are top of the line yeah, yeah no i hear it's, i don't want to go in i get on what them you're saying yeah, i get yeah, what you're yeah, saying yeah, but yeah. then on the flip side it's like who who do you think will have to pay the deficit if you know what i mean in terms of like the amount it costs them to manufacture the different plug mm. um socket uh the dif- you know what i mean the different yeah, plug connectors yeah. uh it will the the cost of that will end up falling on our doorstep, the consumer. So it's like plus Brexit. Yeah, exactly. If we're like UK, you're screwed, bro. Fucking hell, mate. They're still talking about that in the news, aren't they? Oh, Going mate, on and on, mate. It's, ne- it's never gonna hell. stop. Never gonna stop. Never gonna stop. Right, Nick. Do you want to talk about Netflix? Or you want to talk about robots? What do you want to talk about? <sighs> um, let's go. Netflix. All right, cool. So, Netflix. I just want to say, Netflix, fucking killing it with the original content at the moment. Yep. Are you a Netflix user? Yep, yep. Netflix is smashing it. I've watched Black Mirror now, all of them. All of them. I was, I was a bit behind. I've watched all of them now. On only, that. only the latest series is is Netflix original though. Yes. That's so the the, yeah. the 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 ones before that were Channel Four. That's right. Yeah. So, um, but they because they're Netflix, they just said, "How much is it? Yeah. Give me all of it. Yeah. I'll have all of those. Yeah. It's mad. Like the. Like how the landscape is changing in front of our eyes so quickly. Because obviously things always change. Look at the music industry. Do you know what I mean? Things change all the time. Yeah. But I feel like the rate at which film and TV is just going digital so quick is scary. Like the amount of stuff which is coming out on Netflix or Amazon now yeah. as a, as as like that's the that's where they go and then maybe they might get shown on TV on a channel later on. It's scary, man. Mm. And the stuff is so good. You would think that stuff is that that's online only, you know, oh, it's a Netflix original, blah, blah, blah. You'd think, oh, it's going to be pretty shit. It used to be, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no TV channel wanted to take a chance on it. So it must be shit. No, not the way anymore. House of Cards, all the Marvel stuff, which is on Netflix. Um, uh, what's the, what's the, one about like the it's kind of almost like Game of Thrones, but it's like Regal. Is it called Queen? Oh, I don't know. Something like that. Anyway, yeah. there's loads of them on there. Loads of uh, like amazing original, um, like ideas and content that's just killing it. Yeah, yeah, and and you know what? It was only five years ago that Netflix released their first original content, um, and they, like you said, they've changed the game because I agree with you, brother. Like some of the stuff that we see now is movie quality yeah literally easily. movie quality easily because it's easier and cheaper to make sort of superheroes happen yep. yeah not only that is they'll drop in whole seasons at a time before you'd get a pilot of an episode if it went off well and, ev- and ratings were good and there was enough chit chat about it in the press you might get a season now netflix are trying whole seasons and we spoke about this before on the show like i think because they've got data on exactly how many shows you've watched where you turn off if you stop watching a season yep. where is it so they can input all that information into yeah, yeah. a TV. big old computer. They ain't got says, that, have they? They have not got real. They've not got real figures. Yeah, TV. they got they got make believe figures. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the, the same as radio does with the bloody Ray Jars yeah. in the UK. It's yeah. just ridiculous. It's by it's by chance. So Netflix have just kind of. I feel like it's win win. How can they fuck up if they know we all like, for example, eighties stuff and a yeah. bit of horror? Stranger Things yeah. is going to come for us. Do you know what I mean? Narcos killed it. Narcos. You know I mean? Oh fucking Narcos, bruv. 
everything. So they've got shows, documentaries now. They're even doing comedy specials. Uh, their backlog of original content is sick. And they're saying in 2017, they want to go from 400 hours, which they did in 2016, to 1,000 hours of original content. Wow. They've, they've got... There's a new Will Smith movie coming out, right? I saw mm-hmm. um, there's going to be a Netflix original. Mm-hmm. He's he's basically a police officer, right? In this kind of weird. I didn't I didn't see too much of it. Someone posted the trailer onto my Twitter, and I tried to watch it, but then I had to I had to do something else, so I didn't yeah. see it. But he's in, uh, he's in this <laughs> weird um, like universe, isn't he? Mm. Where it's kind of like sci-fi and in a world where mystical creatures live side by side with humans, is that a what human it says? cop is forced to work yeah. with an orc to find a weapon. Everyone is prepared to kill for. So they've got the future, right. which I like. Orcs, Lord of the Rings, yeah, yeah and fucking weapons and killing. Bang. Weapons, smashing it. killing smashing and it. orcs. Smashing and it. And the future. There you go. That's what happens. Netflix say that's what they like. That's what they like. Let's put it all together. So basically, they want to get to a point where uh, one of the heads of Netflix, I don't want to get too deep into it so it gets boring, but they know that one of the biggest things that works against Netflix is having to find that content. So when you... And it happens to me still. There's loads of stuff there, but I still find that I over scroll. I'm like, yeah. whoa, I'm not sure. Yeah, whoa. Yeah. So what they want to do is they want to minimize that amount. So they're going to work harder on making the curation that happens when you open your Netflix. It's a good idea. Not just, yeah, not just show you shows that you might like that are related. They want to start creating shows for specific types of people. Yeah, because it is mad annoying. Like I, like a, an, an example, if my girlfriend stays around mine or, you know, when we were on holiday in Puerto Rico, um we were like oh let's let's find something to watch on netflix and it's like if you don't know what you've gone on there to watch you know if you just want to go on there and watch something yeah like a movie oh let's just check out a movie yeah. you end up just scrolling 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 scrolling, yeah, scrolling, scrolling what? keep scrolling 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 yeah. they see me scrolling <laughs> they hate it <laughs> like there's many puns that yeah. can be made but yeah it's, it is a bit annoying yeah so basically they they it's a uh, what's his name todd yelling that's it he knows that people do a lot of scrolling says maximum people do is like 40 or 50 titles they want to get rid of that and i think if anyone's going to do that it's netflix like do you think it's going to get to a point where netflix are no longer even taking it or other shows acquiring other shows do you think it's going to get to a point where they are literally just a network that just create content or do you think they'll still be like oh we like that we'll take that well at the moment they're they're under no obligation or under no pressure um so they're in a they're in a good position because as you say, they can take stuff that's already successful on telly and put it on, or they can put their own original content on it. I think, I think they won't want to change that just yet. But what I do think is that, that as you've already said, they'll look to increase the amount of original content they've got on there, maybe with a view in the future to being their own network. But then at the same time, they could be screwing themselves over a little bit if they do that because then say if a massive show hap- like on TV happens they, they won't be able to get it because they've already committed to being their own network like a, a, cl- a good example is um is Game of Thrones I guess Game of Thrones isn't on Netflix it's a, it's a HBO series right and you know say if a show that big comes out I'll stick my neck out and say Game of Thrones is probably the most popular show on TV yeah yeah the only thing that fucked them is that that it was known it was the most downloaded show ever mm-hmm. illegally. Yeah, you know what fucked them up the networks if they did they didn't distribute it well enough like they, they held it to their chest too much because if everyone's gonna get it anyway just make it easy for everyone to yeah. get just like iTunes did with music originally when you used to have to pay for it instead of just streaming it or now Spotify have done just make it easy to access and the piracy becomes easy. It's like with Netflix. I'll be honest, I've been at a mate's house while he's trying to fucking get a pirate movie on. It takes ages. Yeah. And he's all, oh, well, I'll just get the stream. I'm like, bro, fuck it. Let's do Netflix. It's bang, easy. Bang, it's bang, there. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. It works. Quality and stream. The maddest thing about it is for me, like, because I get it, right? You know, it comes down to how much money you've got, how much money you want to mm, spend on mm. stuff, blah, blah, blah. But what I don't get is I feel like Netflix and Amazon Prime, for that example, whichever one you want to use, I'm not just, I'm not just mm. saying Netflix. They are like massive value for money. Mm. I just think to myself, just pay it. Mm. Just pay it. What is it now? Seven quid, eight quid? It went yeah. up, didn't it, recently? Yeah, like, it did. Yeah, I got hit with that. Look, even if it's a tenner, right? Ten quid to watch all of that stuff whenever you want in 
whatever country you go to in the world, you know, I mean, obviously the, the, the things that are available change when you go to different countries or whatever. Like, I just think it's not a big outlay. Mm. People will spend 10 quid on a packet of cigarettes and a Ribena. Yeah. yeah. Like that. And it's yeah. not even a question. So just yeah. pay it. Plus man. now you're getting the original content, yeah. which, which is proven tailored to, yeah. to us. Like, because more people are watching it. I mean, I, I love their Taylor show. I, I watched them. It was a piece of crap show, but I loved it. Um, It was called... Was it fucking good? It was set. It was in a Brazilian Netflix show. It was actually a Brazilian show made as an original, and I had to watch it with like really bad overdubbing. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, let me. Find and you actually watched? Yeah. It. Oh, mate. Oh, it was, I can't it, do all that overdubbing. It's three percent. Like. Oh, it was wicked. And I was sometimes I was switching back to Brazilian to them like cussing each other because yeah. it was like you're an asshole, you pussy. And then yeah. I was like, Nah, I need to hear this Brazilian. Need, yeah, yeah. Puta madra. Oh, I was man. like, Yeah. Spanish. <laughs> <but> fine. <laughs> Fuck you. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, uh, b- before we leave this one behind and, and and wrap this episode, are we going to see Netflix releasing stuff in the cinema? Mm. Okay, they got the money, Nick. They got the money. They could easily do it. They've they, got they the could, talent. They could do it now if they wanted to. I just, uh, I don't think they want to. I, d- I would like to actually hear the boss of Netflix talk about this because cinema is in a really tough place at the moment. Obviously, the Oscars have just been, and you know, I mean, they can't even get award fucking. Yeah. Yeah, can't give out awards, right? There's, so there's fucking... always a massive wank fest when mm. Os- the Oscars is on. Everyone acts like they care about movies and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. They don't anymore. People care about movie stars, the people in the movies, but most of those people now, they're in big series that are on telly and stuff anyway, So or on Netflix or whatever. So for me, I don't know how much longer the cinema has as a destination. When was the last time you went to the cinema? Unless it's like, unless it's, a fucking flagship movie franchise like for example star wars rogue one when that came out imax was doing midnight um mm. viewings and all the rest of it unless it's one of those type of movies when was the last time you went into the cinema and it was rammed no nah. the, la- the last one i went to that was back to back ram front to back left to right was Batman versus Superman again, like you said, midnight. Yeah, midnight. They only release. do it yeah. for like big. Every time yeah. I go to the cinema, right? Every time I go, it's empty. There's about there's there's like me and my mate, and then about fucking ten other people in there. More and reason I, for me to go. I just, <laughs> I just think to myself, like they can't be making yeah, money. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. it can't be beneficial. So yeah. you know, I I I think I don't think it's somewhere that Netflix will look to go. I think mm. they'll look to put out more original movies and more and and, and stuff like that, but. It kind of goes against their subscription model, doesn't it? If they're, if if they're, yeah. but I guess it's another revenue yeah. stream. Yeah. Look, I don't know. Like, it's the, right. it's the answer because it's it's an area that's uh, that I'm definitely not an expert in. But if I was running Netflix, I wouldn't be looking at cinema like, oh, I okay. want to infiltrate that market because it's only it's only the biggest one percent of movies which actually do really really well in the cinema that people love that's a that's a that's a good thing to say nick and i suppose um it's good that you said we should talk to tommy ellen the vp of netflix because on the line that no, yeah, that'd, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great yeah game on yeah free um, subscription bro yeah cheers bro uh, i want that 4k subscription uh there's plenty of ways to call some time out there thank you for killing some time he's been sir nicholas bright uh, and he's been marcus bronzy i'm off to the cinema now 